Hi there, DW Berman here, and I'm hoping to demystify some of the file types in uh, Lightwave, uh, particularly concerning uh, the image savers and the the amount of yeah bits per thing. Because you know we see we hear talk about 8-bit graphics, and and well, what does that all mean? Well, in Lightwave we have nothing that says 8-bit. We have something that says 24 and picked 32, ping 24, ping 32. We also have RGB FP and RGB A half, RGB A, uh, FP. You know, we just, they're just all over the place. Um, and some of these are specialized formats and you kind of have to know what they are to, to know whether or not you need to use them. But we're not, we won't get into all of that. But what is what does it mean by bit? Well, Back when Lightwave started, uh, we had 8-bit graphics, and in our case, 8-bit equals 256. Let me switch over to Photoshop briefly, and uh, if I go to the image in mode, you'll see we have RGB. We also have 8-bit slash channel, 16-bit slash channel, 32-bit slash channel. Well. Originally, we didn't have 8 bits per channel, we just had 8 bits. Actually, before that, we didn't even have 8 bits, we had 4 bit or whatever. Um, so let me, yeah, I'll just go over to the, I'll just fumble around here in the dark. Okay, anyway, here's our color table. This is now an 8 bit image. There are 256 slots for colors to go in. There's 0 and then there's 255 or 255 and 0 or 0 and yeah, whatever. So there are basically 256 squares that we can uh, put color into. And that's kind of the way it was. Like the Amiga computer was fantastic at its time. 1985 came out with 4,096 colors as a total possibility number of colors. There was a special mode on that computer where you could show them all on screen at one time and that was amazing. It was considered photoreal at the time. But generally you just picked 256 of those colors. You know, one yeah, you just you just picked which color you wanted to put into your sprite or whatever. You didn't use all of the... You didn't use them all at the same time, is what I'm saying. So, anyway, if we switch this to grayscale, it screws up our image, but this is basically what we're talking about. We have 0 to 255. This is our 200... This is our 8-bit grayscale image. Let me undo back to my 8-bit per channel. If I go to the red channel, there's the grays that are used in the red channel. There's our green channel, there's our blue channel, and these are all combined, red, green, and blue, into a color image. So that's 256 levels of color per channel. Of course, like I said, it wasn't always the case it, that it was 256 per channel. So here we have our little chart saying 8-bit is 256 and black is 0, white is 255. Well, what happened when they actually expanded the amount of colors that were possible? Well, they added the channels together. So, back in the day, you could get a 24-bit graphics card for the Amiga and spend an ungodly amount of money. And, um, actually, it's not that bad compared to today's modern high-end graphics cards either. Probably about the same. But, it was a 24-bit. So, you could have, was it 16.8 million colors or something like that as your total color palette instead of 4,096 so it was a huge jump. You could get some nice smooth gradations between the colors because you had more color to work with. And they got to the number 24 bit by just adding RGB together. So red, green, blue is 24. So that's where we get our 24 on our TGA 24 over here. Over here. So uh, how do you get to the 32 bit color? Well, you just added the alpha channel. So now we have. 8 bits for red, 8 bits for green, 8 bits for blue, 8 bits for alpha, and now we have a 32-bit image. And, you know, that's all well and good until people need more color depth, you know, because there's more 
to the visible light spectrum than is uh, representable. <laughs> it's representable on a, a video screen. So if we want to go higher than black, or you know, lower than black or higher than white, we need to expand the bit depth. So that's where we came into our 16-bit imagery and our 32-bit imagery and our 10-bit video formats. So we're actually talking about nowadays we're talking about per channel instead of total. So yeah, that that's the big big difference is is a lot of these image formats are older image formats and they're named accordingly. So when it's talking about ping 24, it's talking about 24 bit total in the image. If we're talking about uh FP up here, that's floating point. That's actually I believe I believe that's equivalent to the 32 bit imp, you know, per channel. So uh it might actually be more, I don't know, but pretty much my understanding is FP is the 32 is uh, 32 bits per channel, and the RGBA half is 16 bits per channel, and of course we have RGB and RGBA. So this is the A in there means the alpha channel, so red, green, blue, alpha. And down here under TIFF we have the confusingly labeled 24 FP. So I'm pretty sure this is just you know oh eight bits. <laughs> I'm pretty sure that the 24 FP just means there's no alpha channel, and the 32-bit FP means there's is an alpha channel. But I could be wrong on that. Um, as far as where to actually select these different file formats, well, you have your global renders panel here with the output tab, and you can select them there. We also have our image processing panel, or processing panel, where we can uh, add image filters, and there are several related to saving this ARA export saves a layered file for the Aura Paint program, which might load in uh, TV Paint these days. I don't know, because it started as TV Paint, I guess. Maybe something before that. But it was TV Paint, then New Tech bought it and named it Aura, and then Bauhaus Software bought it named it Mirage, and then TV Paint got it back again. So um, there's that. Uh, these extended RLA and RPF uh, exports allow you to save uh, stuff like the depth information into the thing, so it's kind of like a layered file in that sense. Um, there's a Photoshop PSD export, which saves huge files, uh, also with layered information, and uh, render buffer export has been depreciated, but that was the main way to get image buffers out before, uh, one file at a time. And now in Lightwave 11 and up, we have compositing buffer export, and I'm not showing you Lightwave 11.5 now because I have a scene loaded in that and I don't want to disturb it. But uh, the new version of the 11.5 version is a nice step up from the 11.0 version of this thing. And you can set your image file formats here. And in the new one, you can actually save the buffers into a multi layered um, EXR. So. Yeah, hopefully that's been a helpful little talk for you. It's a rather confusing subject. If you want to know more information about the what it actually means to be 8-bit or 16-bit or 32-bit, 64-bit and all that stuff, generally it just means how much information is passed each cycle of a computer, each click, every time something's passed, how much is being thrown out at once. Um, but this is probably being viewed on the internet and the internet is a great place to look up stuff like this so I'm sure you can do some research on your own um, thanks for watching subscribe to this channel uh, I'd like to put a new video up every week usually about graphics and um, also check out liberty3d.com where I have some stuff for sale and there are other great tutorials from other great artists as well as a few plugins as well so uh, thanks for watching and uh, have a great day